What's up, Nabooers? We have a couple updates today for Cloud CPM, but mostly something that you can do today at home for fun. So I was thinking maybe I can share some little projects that you can do. So uh, Louis, or Louis, I'm not actually sure how to pronounce his name. You have to ask him over email. Um, he shared with me that my ADM3 emulation was not using the keyboard uh, arrow keys, cursor keys correctly. So I made some changes to that into Cloud CPM. So now they are. And when I did so, he also pointed out that on the A drive, I had just copied a bunch of software over and I mean, we're so busy, I don't really get a chance to check everything. So I'm super glad that people are giving me feedback on what works and what doesn't. And he said, hey man, WordStar don't work. So WordStar was configured for a different terminal emulation. So I went through it all, fixed up all the emulations, reinstalled all the software, and now we can play. So here's some cool things you can try out. So first off, let's take a little look-see in the text editors, and let's check out WordStar. Now, I don't really know much about how to use WordStar, so I might get stuck in it. I sometimes find myself not knowing how to exit. <laughs> so you will notice that when it boots up, we're gonna get ADM3, which means you can start using WordStar. Cool, right? And you can see here, that's the emulation mode that I have it set for. So on the A drive, that's what we get. So I can slide back and forth here between the virtual AD mode. And like I said, I don't know how to use it. So it's kind of up to you guys. Um, X to exit the system. Let's see if that works. Nice, it does. Now, the other thing I thought was kind of fun too, let's go back into user area zero and run our summary again. And summary is giving us a, a summary of what's currently configured in the, uh, the drives for Cloud CPM. And you can see here, we also have Plan 80 Spreadsheet. Now, on user seven, Plan 80 Spreadsheet, I actually couldn't get Plan 80 to run, not yet, but I did install SC, which is super calc. And that's pre-configured. And these are super fun to play with. I gotta say, like these old school spreadsheets, I know VisiCalc was like the killer app of computers back in the day. And SuperCalc, I recall seeing it actually on floppy disks on my Apple II when I was a kid, my dad had it. And I don't know, you know, at the time I didn't know what it was. I remember putting it in sometimes and being like, oh, this is neat. So, <laughs> but yeah, I can use the arrow keys and move around, which is something that we weren't able to do before, but it's also rendered using um, ADM3. So this is great. It's uh, it's really neat. Now again, I don't know how to use it. I'm not even sure how to put data in the cell. <laughs> so anybody who, who knows uh, VisiCalc is probably laughing at me, being like, what is this guy doing right now? Um, how can I get out? I think it's front slash Q exit super calc, yes. Okay, now. Something else that I thought was really neat, and this is this is just super fun, is I think it's in user area uh, eight. Let's take a quick little look -see. In another video, I had demonstrated how to copy files using cloud GUI between the computer, between the PC and the NABU, and in the CPM drive. And I also demonstrated Turbo Pascal. So I installed Turbo Pascal because I thought it would be really neat to, uh, to play with it because I don't really know much about Pascal. I recall using it in high school a little bit and it was it was neat, I guess. I, really, I don't have a lot of recollection. So um, to tell you the truth, I couldn't even write any code in this at all. So, but what I thought was neat is if I say uh, error messages, I guess it loads an OVR file when you say include error messages. So it's gonna use a, or a message file. So it's gonna use a little bit more memory. Now, there is a, uh, some sample programs included, if I hit D, um, some sample files included with this installation. So we have command line, lister, MC demo, but particularly I thought was really neat is there's one in here just called mc.pas. It's a spreadsheet program. So let's load that. Actually, what we can do is we can first, we have to tell the compiler using the letter O, you can see it's capitalized there. 
that we want to make a com file. So we're going to hit C for com file. And then we're going to hit, uh, I believe it's Q to quit out of here. Now I think that actually saved it. Let's just go back with into O again and just make sure. Yeah, we're still on compile a com file. So now we'll Q. And now what we're going to do is we want to compile a program. So we're going to hit C. It's going to ask us what the file name is. I'm just going to type in MC and hit enter. So it's going to load the MC file, which is our spreadsheet type program, which is so wild to imagine. And it's all written inside of Turbo Pascal. And you can see here that um, the lines are compiling and it's creating an MC.com. Now the reason why we had to go into compiler options and choose a COM file is because with Turbo Pascal in memory and trying to compile the program, there's not enough RAM available. So you can't compile it in memory and run it. So we have to compile it to a COM file. And that's just because of the size of the particular file that we're going to be building here. And forever and a day later, we have a compiled program. 1,274 lines. That's quite a bit of code for this little program here. And we can see here that it's uh, four, 13K of uh, compiled and 14K of data. So I'm guessing the data is gonna be the array for storing all the information, leaving 15K free. So let's take a little look at we built what we built here. So we'll DIR, oh, we're still in. We're still in Turbo Pascal, that's right. So we're gonna have to get back into our menu here. I think if I hit question mark, it'll, there we go, it'll refresh. Now we're gonna want a Q to quit. It's gonna bring us to our command prompt. In our folder, we should now have an mc.com that we just built. Let's take a little look and see. Oh, I think it's gonna be right there. No, mc.pass, there it is, mc.com. So let's run it and take a look at a program that we just built using Turbo Pascal right from source code. <laughs> MicroCalc. Oh, this is fantastic. Press any other key for help or return to start. Well, let's just start and see here. Well, there we go. We have our uh, little spreadsheet here. Well, not just neat actually is because what the virtual 80 does is it follows the cursor. So as I move across the screen, you see it scrolling across. That's actually not the terminal emulation doing it. That would actually be, yeah, see, that's actually our V80. So C Cloud CPM is following the cursor as it goes. Now, can I put in a value in here? Just, oh, cool. How about a number? Let's go 76. Look at that floating point. Cool. Calculating. Huh, I wonder what it's calculating. So. It says here, type front slash for commands. I'm guessing Q to quit. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. So those are some things that you could try out. I just wanted to share that with you because I think it's a lot of fun to play with this old software, building projects and things like that from source code, especially on something that is uh, 1984 right? Like this is, this is ancient stuff. And before I go, I'll share one last thing because I might as well just add this to the end of the, end of the video. Uh, we're at 7.3 for cloud CPM BIOS. And there's a few changes that I've made where I'll talk about a little bit further in detail once we make sure that they're working. But if you ever type in stat DEV, stat is a program that allows you to configure your input output devices, your console, things like that. And I mentioned inside of um, a previous video and also inside of the news, that the IO byte is being used now. And the IO byte is, uh, allows, allows you to configure your output and input for different devices. So that means serial, etc. So we're adding serial support. However, um, I'll, I'll get further detail into it, but uh, an individual on the forum, I have to ask if he wants his name mentioned, um, sorry, on YouTube, he'd, he'd reached out to me and then he sent me an email. So he actually had done some, some hardware modifications to his NABU and he's using the keyboard 8251 um, TX. Cause remember the keyboard is only receiving data 
to like the NAB was receiving data from the from the keyboard. So he's using the TX on that chip, which is not hooked up, and you can just simply jumper it to um, a, another port, another pin, and you can actually, without having to purchase a serial card, get this, no serial card necessary, we can use the NABU and have serial output to a device. And it's this is a, a test version, so 7.3 CPM BIOS actually has the console, if you set it for TTY, it'll actually output to the 8251 uh, so that's pretty cool. So that means you'll be able to take what's on the screen here and output it to a serial device, to a console of some sort. And lastly, I'm gonna leave you with this little bit of update. You can see here in the news, it says there's a new VDP cursor driver. And that's because, let me show it to you. So user eight, and we're going to Turbo Pascal. I'm gonna use Turbo Pascal as an example because it has a nice editor we can use. And as I already mentioned in this video, I don't know how to use WordStar yet. <laughs> so that's just uh, that's just the way it is. So let's, uh, we don't need error messages. Let's just go and edit. I'll hit E for edit, uh, just blah, 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 a project here. So there's our Kajaha password, pass file, PS file. I'm gonna type in some words and some words and some words. I'm gonna arrow key around and look at this. You see how the cursor is over top of the cursor, but flashing the character that was already there? Right? I'm pretty proud of this. I know it's so simple, but it's something I never considered because like I mentioned, I've been using Cloud CFM, but I have not been using it to its fullest extent like some of you may be using. So I got some feedback of people saying, hey man, the, the character that when the cursor's there would disappear because what it used to do before is it would flash between a blank space and the, uh, the cursor uh, character. So now it's actually the character that was there before. I know, I know, it's such a silly thing to be uh, to be excited about, but hey, I don't know how to get out here, actually. Um, escape Q, escape, uh, uh, I don't know what to do. That works. I'll see you guys all in the next video. Take care. Mm -hmm.